All right, welcome back everybody. So carrying on from last week, I'm going to go over the fusion method for corner pinning. And the main advantage behind that is that it's going to give us a true motion tracking experience when we're trying to corner pin something in place. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, so as you can see, I have the same corner pinning project opened up as last week. There's the one we did last week together. And here's the one I showed you at the very end with the janky microwave corner pinning thing that I did. Now what I'm just going to do is create a duplicate of this just by highlighting everything, holding alt and dragging it over. And then I'm just going to work on this leftmost one. And we don't actually need the words microwave for this. I'm going to be re-adding that back in after. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Now to begin, what I'm going to do is right click on the video that I'm going to be working with and I'm going to create a new fusion clip. From there, we just have to make sure that it's selected and we can go into fusion. Okay, so now that we're in fusion, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the media in is selected in red and then on your keyboard, hit shift and spacebar to bring up the select tool menu. From there, we can type in planar. Tr we can type in planar tracker and add that in. This is going to be the tool that's going to track everything and allow us to do the corner pinning when it gets time to do that. So, what we can see in the top right corner is under operation mode. The one we want is track. Later on, we're going to change this to corner pin, but first we have to actually track the points that we want. The tracker type we are going to change from a single point to a hybrid point or an area because we're going to be tracking the entire microwave. And then the motion type is probably the single most important piece here. You have to make sure that you get this right, otherwise you're going to get really weird results. Now in my case, I'm most likely going to be using perspective and that's just because of the type of motion that we're doing. Um, we are going to be moving forward, so we're going to have translation. We are, do not have any rotation, but we do have scale, meaning that if I pick the second, third, or fourth one, there's a very good chance it's going to get messed up because we have translation, especially later on when the microwave exits the frame. It's likely going to assume that there's some sort of a rotation motion happening there and mess up the very end of our sequence. So I'm not going to be choosing any of those, but again, just pick whichever one works for your video type. You can always re-render these if you have weird results. So I'm going to pick perspective. Output type is background, that's fine. And I'm going to choose to track the Luma for this. The vast majority of the time, that's what you're going to be doing as well. Now I'm just going to zoom in on the microwave and go forward to somewhere around here, just to a point where we can see the entire microwave. From there, all we have to do is start drawing around the microwave or whatever other point you're tracking by clicking. And in this case, I do want to capture underneath it and just go a little bit outside of the microwave. I find that just having a small search radius here gives you the best results. And I really do want to capture this because it has a nice amount of, uh, of points to actually look at there. I feel like this is going to be key for me. There isn't too much going on here. So if we zoom out so we can see exactly what's going on again, from here, we just have to set our tracking point, the first one that we're going to be working with. And from here, I'm going to choose to track forward to the end of the track first. So I'm just going to click this button. And there we go. It tracks the microwave to the end there. Now I'm going to go to the second uh, keyframe that it created here. And now I'm going to track backwards to the start of our video clip. And it looks like it successfully tracked everything. We have little white spots all along the timeline here. So we know that it created points for everything. Perfect. And now I'm going to go back to that first point that we created here. And now I'm just going to select everything, move it down a little. 
and start working on adding in that text. So there's a button right here that says text plus. We can just add that right in. And if yours, if you had the uh, planar tracker selected when you did that, it's going to create a merge node. In this case, we don't actually need that merge. It's not going to be used for this. So just click on it and delete it. So to actually see the text, make sure to click on this left hand preview right here. It's the little circle on the left underneath the text. And then we can change the color. I'm going to use the same one as last week, this lime green, so we can see it against the dark black background on the microwave window there. And I'm going to type in microwave. From here, I am just going to change it back to that font I like. I know completely useless for a demo, but creatures of habit, right? And then I'm going to change the size so it almost fits the entire left hand preview window. From there, all we have to do is select the output from the text and drag it onto the green arrow, which is going to be our corner pinning. So just drag that onto there. Then go back into your planar tracker and change the track type, or sorry, change the um, operation mode from track to corner pin. From here, you're going to see that the word microwave is plopped onto the screen, but it's nowhere near where we want it. So just drag the corners and put them in place. All right, so now that we have that in place, I'm just going to go back to the very first frame here, hit play. And we can see that it is perfectly corner pinned. It's not juddering around or moving around. It's perfectly in place there. And even towards the end, it starts going off screen. And that's exactly what we were looking for. So if I go back to the edit tab, and if we compare the one that we just created in Fusion, you're going to see a huge difference in the final result. So the one that we created last week, if I zoom in on that one, what we're going to see is a lot more of that janky movement. You can see it's never quite stationary. It's always moving around a little bit. But if we go to the one that we created now, where it has proper motion tracking, you can see it is just locked right onto the spot that we want. And there we have it. It's that easy to do a motion tracking in the Fusion tab. And all you have to do is basically change one parameter to corner pin when you're done. And it just works. Now again, if you do have any trouble with this, you see that it's not corner pinning properly. It's moving around a little bit. Just go back to track and start over again. So if we found that it wasn't working for some reason, all we have to do is get rid of the points so we can clear the data. And then we can try it again. So if I was to choose, let's say this one, which I know isn't going to work well, and I'll just show you guys, we can uh, reset a new track point right from there, track it to the end, Go back here, track it to the beginning. And now if I change this to corner pin, you can see here it's perfectly lined up, but here it's not. It's moving around and that's why I was a little hesitant to use that one. So if you do have any issues with it, again, that's all you have to do. Just go back change the motion type and give it another try. Sometimes you are going to have to manually adjust things, go frame by frame if your computer's having some difficulty, but overall, this is a much better result than the method that we used last week. But that's not to say that last week's method was useless. Again, for very simple types of animations or for still frames, if you just have a basic pan happening, for example, it works very well and there's no point to go through the hassle of motion tracking something like that when you can just create it in a few mouse clicks. 
All right, and if this video was helpful at all, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you'd like to see in future episodes. And until next time, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.